Last time on Roleplay Roulette, Jay Random learned who was sending him all those anonymous love notes. After all this time, I can't believe it was you. Bakara. Johnny Artie was learning that sometimes to get by, all you need is a little faith. In order to pass the big math test, I made a dark compact with forces both inscrutable and profane. And Fox was being pressured by his peers to try the marijuanas. Why is this what a clown? And now, for the thrilling conclusion. So, a redo. That's irregular. If you're worried that that's going to become a habit, it's not. Years ago when we were tiny baby reviewers, we covered Iron Claw Squaring the Circle by Sanguine Productions. We were really new to the craft and made some egregious mistakes, some of which we publicly apologize for, but the whole video has been bothering me more and more. It's sloppy, it's unfocused, and above all, the criticism just isn't outrageously constructive. This was mostly the result of our learning curve, but Fox has been increasingly obsessed with redoing it because he feels that in some ways he was unreasonably harsh to avoid looking biased towards games he actually loves. So he badgered us into doing a new review to correct past errors. <laughs> Badger. I promise this isn't going to become a habit, doing old material over again. This is Iron Claw, squaring the circle, Redux. Alright, so serious mode disengage. It's time to expose the viewer to the very real threat of useful information. Iron Claw Squaring the Circle is the first full new edition of Sanguine Games LLC's Iron Claw Anthropomorphic Fantasy. It's a furry game set in a sword and sorcery world of dark fantasy and political intrigue. Iron Claw presents a gritty setting heavily influenced by medieval Europe with a healthy influence from the Persian empires. Characters can be very diverse in both race and occupation thanks to a detailed species template and an open-ended career template that allows you to customize a bit before you join the rat race. Characters have six traits, body, mind, speed, will, species, and career, each assigned to die, d4, d6, or d8. Skills are purchased by points that represent die levels, 4 to 12, on a 1 to 1 basis. The skills are, for the most part, open-ended, allowing for them to be called on in non-specific situations. Characters are further customized by gifts, special abilities ranging from dice bonuses all the way up to full-bore magical powers. Player characters are scaled back from previous editions, but still strong enough to take an NPC by the horns. Sanguine seems to want every dog to have his day, so players get the lion's share of strength early on. Most roles combine a skill and a trait, and the highest number rolled is compared to a target number. If two characters act against each other, they both roll and go for the high number. If you tie, something else might happen, as Iron Claw has many situations where this creates a third result. Initiative doesn't determine attack order, but rather if the character is surprised, prepared, or ready to let slip the dogs of war. Focus is a state that can be achieved through initiative or by spending a turn to achieve it. Focus can be spent to take an extra action or even interrupt another character. The most complex system is damage, which is sustained as hits that apply stat effects. One damage causes hurt, two causes hurt and afraid, three causes hurt, afraid, and injured, and so on. Since you can't have the same effect twice, later hits need to do more. Hurt and injured each cause plus one damage, but afraid just makes the character chicken out. Damage is mitigated by armor, body, and some gifts, but strong combatants can cause enemies to drop like flies. The game is designed to put a heavy emphasis on training, so a character who isn't a career fighter should really hold their horses. Training makes a big difference, and ill-advised fights can get you killed. As said before, magic is handled by buying and using gifts. These are usually provided by a mystical career, but anyone can learn with a sufficient teacher. Magical gifts often provide an effect that can be repeated, or a powerful effect that requires the gift to be exhausted. Exhausted gifts can be refreshed in different ways. Magic is often quite powerful, and its potential for explosions and group attacks can allow you to kill two birds with one stone. Some magic controls minds, some changes the world, some harnesses powerful and destructive elemental forces. Nothing to horse around with. All right, that has to stop. What? The animal pun, stop it. Never! Honestly, my favorite thing about Iron Claw is the sheer amount of species you can be. My bear was an unarmed fighter because I wanted to make bear hands puns. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
The I actually think that the art on these books looks great. The problem I have with it is that I don't feel that this artwork that they put on the cover represents the game that's inside. It makes it look like a family game, and it's, this isn't a, a game that can't be family friendly, but inside the book the game projects a almost dark fantasy. Like, this is a setting of scheming politicians and corrupt priests and ruthless brigands ser searching the countryside or, or like or Game whatever. of Thrones than Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, that's fair, a good fair way to Fair comparison. Play. Well, you're, I mean, the super. example I would love to use is the old Jade Claw. Oh, God, the old Jade Claw or book is beautiful. Or even the new Book of Jade. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, see, that's yeah. way better. In a previous review, I called the art terrible, and it is not my actual feelings. So I think I think what we what we should do is we can just we can just say I think in a nutshell that it's not the art per se that we have an issue with. A right. lot of these are very beautiful pieces oh, yeah. of artwork, and, but they create a weird discrepancy between the artwork and the themes presented in the game, and it just seems like a bit of a misstep. Though Henrik looks great. Henrik. Which one is great. Henrik? Henrik is the weasel and the green hat. He is my favorite part of that cover. We originally had some beefs with the rules, and I feel like we've mitigated those. I have a very right. important question before we get started. Can I look like that without joining the cult? Absolutely. Fantastic. I want to be a fire horse. Basically, and then you can rap you can uh, you can evolve into Rapidash. Now I'm never going to God damn it. No, this is the part <laughs> Fuck, that, okay. I walked into that. God dang it. <laughs> First of all, that's really good. Second of all, I'm never going to be able to look at this guy again without seeing Big Macintosh. <gasps> You're right! I want to talk about the damage engine. Ooh. Okay. Now, the immediate negative criticism I have is in that book right over there, as a criticism, and a legit criticism, very poorly explained. Yes. Yeah, now, there's I the, can see that. The, Which is something we, a criticism we leveled before. We did before. And the problem with the explanation is that it's ambiguous. Now, Mirad's song, when I read that, and I read the way they explained the damage engine, it had ambiguity Much gone. clearer. Points for them not copy-pasting it and perpetuating the problem. I have come down on the decision that I actually prefer this engine over the original. Uh, okay. which is you know, a, I do too. It, it's a big step for me because I started playing Iron Claw in 2001. That's when I started playing D&D. I actually like it better now myself. I have to admit that I still am a little out of love with the magic system. I a it little bit really grew on me. The only issue I have with it is them tying some of the gifts to equipment. Oh yeah. I don't like that. That was that's the only thing that I didn't care for. I don't like pools of radiance though. If you don't like pools of radiance, then stay the fuck out of Myth Draenor. I do. Okay. Now the problem is, is where I think where they cut the books up, and there's two parts to this. This is one of the games, and this has been a big trend lately. Character creation is at the very beginning of the book, and then they explain you the systems later. I think this is a very minor criticism. I've heard it levied elsewhere. Is what I think is a bigger, a more important idea. Is I would prefer to see the fluff first. A major criticism I have is their layout, because mm. all of the fluff is in the host book. Oh, that's not good. I didn't know that. I've only read the omnibus. One of the saddest posts I've ever read, a person on a forum that I was a member of purchased this book, the Player's, the Player's Handbook, have, after having watched Iron Liz's review. Iron Liz went on and on and on. She had a lot to say about the setting and how great it was. Oh, and okay. And there's no setting. And he read it. He said, I read this book cover to cover and never found this great setting that she went on and on and on about. And I can only assume that Iron Liz doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, no. This game is probably ripe for a stronger formatting. Some rearranging and a little bit of clarification. Yeah, a little yeah. clarification, a little Really all would be necessary. In fact, um, And you have like a 10. Barflung is an yeah. apocalypse world hack. Oh. Yes. Well, I was talking about the book. Oh, of yeah, Bone and Ivory. Yeah. Bone and Ivory is a whole new. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's the right. Book of Jade, but it's going to be a, 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 a kind of Near East Africa setting. Oh my God! Yeah, and I'm Which very. Are, that oh sounds my God. very <laughs> excited. Like it could about be interesting. That. We backed that, right? Uh, no, because oh. I didn't hear about it. Damn it! Uh, that's one thing that really makes me sad with Sanguine, is because communication does kind of fall by the wayside sometimes. Mm -hmm. I didn't even hear about the book of Bone and Ivory until after it was already funded. I highly recommend this game. Yes, I think that it's, uh, this is a lot of good game for its price. However, um, I will warn people that the formatting is a little bad. 
like, if anybody decides to get it and finds themselves confused, talk to they, us. They can contact me on our Facebook yeah. Oh, yeah. or our Twitter, Fox preferably our questions. Facebook. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk your ear off. I would love to see a revision that takes care of some of the formatting issues. Other than the few criticisms that we presented, at least us, we like it a lot. Yeah. And if you want to check out the system, but you you are tepid on the anthros, check out Mirab song. Yeah, Mirab songs are good. Also, I'm sorry, Myriad song. Myriad. You got me saying it wrong. Myriad song. We, we got corrected a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what I will say is that if the furry thing doesn't bug you, like it kind of bugs me, the the engine, the game itself is beautiful and it's brilliant. It's brilliantly designed. It just needs just that little tiny bit of clarification yeah, it and it will work polish. and it's beautiful. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So we will... <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks everyone. for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Give us a subscription. We will uh, give us a subscription if you want to see more <laughs> RPG reviews. We are on schedule. We're on track for a change. Yeah. Stuff's happening. Two is a trend. Two is a trend. <laughs> we'll probably back uh, next month with uh, stuff about Exalted all month long. Yep. Um, yep. Preferably. Hopefully. And... We'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah.